Hi all, movie three, we are going to actually paint the apple now, and you're going to see me paint the entire apple. I may even paint the leaf. It may be in a separate number four movie. I'm not sure yet. Um, I really, uh, I'll keep the brush palette here as long as I feel like it, um, but I've already started drawing around this apple, but before we actually get into the nitty gritty of it, um, and you remember with my um, techniques that I was using, I had already made a, um, a Wacom tablet um, texture on it, but I'm going to actually um, throw that away and we're going to do the whole thing over again. So um, I really don't even need this black background anymore, so I'm going to throw that away. Whoops, I just duplicated it. I'm going to throw it away. So now I only have the apple and the background, and I really don't want the apple with its white background around it. So although it really doesn't matter, I, I suppose it really doesn't matter, um, but I'll, I'll get rid of that in a few minutes to, as I you know, progress. But what I wanted to do was to go to Chrome and to show you that all I did was type in Apple Images. And then I went to Search Tools, um, and in Search Tools I went into, um, oh, I'm sorry, I went to Images, sorry. Then I went into Search Tools, then I went into Size, and I wanted Large. We don't have to go any larger than Large. Um, which is fine. Just don't get too pixelated of an of an apple. And the apple that I chose was something like this apple right here in the corner. Let me actually look at the difference between that apple and this apple. No, uh, well that wasn't the exact apple. This was pretty much the exact apple. I wanted to get an apple that was about a thousand pixels, 900 to a thousand pixels wide. But I wanted you to see how if you wanted more apples in a similar method, just click the more view over here and in the more view you get a whole bunch of apples. Now try to be careful that under um, user rights you, you're, it's labeled for reuse, okay? Just, just so you just protect yourself, okay? So you choose your apple. I'm good with whatever apple you choose. Just make sure it has a good amount of red values, like that would be a great apple to use, although it's only 319 pixels by 364 pixels, so obviously I don't think it would be a great apple to use. But let's make sure we have the size again enlarged to narrow down the field, and then choose your apple. Okay, well, this is my apple, so now I'm going to get going on that apple. Now, I've already started a work path around the apple, and I'm going to continue. So all I did was, let me go to my size so you can see, I have an 8 by 8 by 200 pixels per inch file, which if you go 8 times 200, um, that's 1,600 pixels wide. So that's a, that's a good size, you know, thing to use, um, canvas to use. So let's click OK. Now, I'm going to diminish or dim the opacity on the apple just a bit so we can see my pen line around the apple and just so um, I'm going to take the P key and click on it and I want you to be um, I'm going to turn up the opacity back up to 100 so you can see where I was drawing I can tell that the apple has a um, it, part of the white background reflects off the edge of the apple. So I started drawing all the way around this apple and I'm going to continue drawing and I'm going to do some paths and talk as I'm going and you need to get better or just more practice with your pen tool techniques. So this is a great time to do that. I'm going to hit the F key to expand this to full screen so I can use my space bar and my um, left mouse button to move this around. And you can see how I'm just trying to follow the contour of this apple in, in, a, in a good geometric Mother Nature way, whatever the heck that meant. Now, I'm going to pretend that there is no stem there, so I'm going to actually click the apple and actually paint right through the apple, because this work path is just the apple. So now that I've named the work path, I have an apple. I'll save the file. Now I'm going to click away from that in the path palette. Look at how I click away because I want to actually do a stem. So I'm going to start drawing my stem all the way around just like you would, okay? And then I'm going to do a separate one for the leaf. I may not do the leaf on this one just for expediency of um, getting this to a, uh, a, a good point. Um, so I'm going to come around the bottom, I'm going to come over to the other side of the stem, come back up the left-hand side of the stem, and let's just try to get it as accurate as possible, even though nobody would know if I wasn't as accurate as what the stem actually is. I'm just getting close enough. Let me zoom in, and now you can see how I'm holding the Option or Alt key, and I'm going to join in that side of the um, 
path. Now I have closed my path on the stem. Let's double click it and call it stem. Now let's click away. Now if I was going to do a leaf, this is where I would actually do a separate leaf layer. And I would come around the leaf. I'll, I'll, I'll try putting it in there. Um, I did tell you that I'm going to paint the entire thing in front of you. So if I have any issues or problems, I'll deal with them as I would deal with it in a normal, productive manner in my commercial art business. I've come across f jobs and files like this all the time where you there's no one perfectly good, absolutely, without question, it's the ultimate solution. Um, many of you will come up with really good solutions using a varied amounts of um, different kinds of things. And I'm going to actually generate a saved selection of the interior. I want you to see how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it right now anyway. I'm going to take this, this um, leaf. Okay, and I want to generate a selection of the light veins. I don't want to draw them. I mean, would you want to draw all those? Heck no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it and name it leaf. Remember, I'm, I'm kind of shooting by the hip here, okay? And I'm going to um, save the file. I'm going to make a selection by command clicking on the leaf. And I'm going to click over to here to the layer. And I'm going to hit command J. And I'm going to name this layer leaf. Now I'm going to try to name all of my layers. And I might just name it leaf reference, but I'm actually labeling this R-E-F-E-R-E-N-C, not V. C E. Now I'll save the file again. I'm going to turn off the apple. I wanted just to have the leaf selected. And I'll show you why. In my channels palette, I want to generate a separate selection that's going to be saved. I'm going to close my brush palette. That is going to be the light value of this leaf. Okay. Now to do that, I would like to raise the um, level on this leaf. Not for any other reason but to get more contrast on it. So I'm going to click to the leaf layer and I'm going to hit Command L. And I'm going to just raise the contrast up. So I'm going to brighten the leaf and darken the leaf so there's a better separation. I'm not going to paint it this harshly. I just wanted a better separation of the values. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to Command or Control click on it to generate a selection of the leaf. See, I can turn it off. See the selection of the leaf? Because when I enter Select Color Range, I am going to be able to go into that, get very close, and click on this value right here. Now look over here. Look at how it color range chooses a range of color. Now I'm going to dial it down to about here, 136. Now look over here in this little black and white image. Whatever is white is where I'm going to be able to paint. Wherever it isn't white is where it's going to protect the selection. Did you follow what I said? Now I'm going to click OK. Now it generated a selection of all the light values of that leaf. Okay. Now what I want to do is to save it. Once I save it and be able to use it later to paint with, I'm going to save it in channels. So I go to Save Selection. Now let me call this the Leaf Veins. I swear I forgot how to spell vein. No, I didn't. Okay, the Leaf Veins. Now I'm going to deselect Command-D and I'm going to click on it. Now look, where white is is where I'm going to be able to paint later. Now what I want to do actually in this channel is to up the contrast of the channel. So some of this gray turns darker black. So I'm going to hit Command L on the channel. Now look at how I can raise the channel darkness up a little bit. Now look at how it's really beautiful on the top. I know I'm giving you a lot here, but I want to raise up the darkness of this area where I'm circling. You follow what I'm saying? Okay. So what I'm going to do is take the lasso and I'm going to put a very quick lasso around this part of the leaf. Look what I did. Look at how neat that is. Okay. Now I'm going to feather that by just a little bit, by about 10 or 15 pixels. Now please watch when I go back to Command L. 
how I'm going to be able to only darken that interior part of the leaf. The other parts of the leaf are staying put. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now look at how neat that turned out like in the bottom here. I'll even raise the white up and I'll raise the black more to the left. Now look at how I've generated a really neat, I'm going to Command D, I'm going to save the file. All I'm going to do on this leaf veins later is command click it to turn it into a selection and I'm going to paint with it. I'm not going to paint with it now. Okay, now I'm going to go back and turn off that leaf layer. It's just the leaf reference. It's not, I'm going to even put the word reference in there. Okay, now I'm going to save the file again. Now what I want to do is to finish painting or drawing the items that I need. I need one more item in the path palette. I need to have the part of the apple where it changes value. Now, please understand that when you make a selection, you don't have to paint within the entire selection. Brian will explain. I'm going to take a pen path and I'm going to start outside the object. And look at how I'm going to make this shape, just like this, where the apple has a pretty dramatic change of value. Now, if I go way beyond the apple, and then just go up and over and down, I have now closed the path. I don't have to paint out here, but even if I do, there's a method that, not only with a layer mask, but there's a method where I don't have to get the paint out here. I mean, I can stop the paint from showing up out here, and it's by making a clipping group, and I'll show you that later. I just want to darken these values and lighten from the... I want to lighten from the bottom of this path. I'll turn it into a selection. Let me, let me put in here, this is the top shading of the apple. So I just kn I know what it is. So when I make it into a selection, and I'm going to turn off the apple. Do you see how I can paint this way now, right? I can paint into the shape of the selection, or if I inverse it, I can paint away from it which means this way, because now I just inversed it. So I'm painting on the outside, okay? But I don't need it yet, so I'm going to hit Command-D. I'm just drawing the things that I need to draw with. Now there's another thing I need to draw with, which is right here. So watch how I draw a little bit of a path. Notice how it's making a brand new work path, because I want to draw this little darkness down here. Now look at how I'm just... Um, completing my shape. Now I'm going to call this bottom shading of the apple. And I hit Command S to save. Now I have all of the things that I think that I need on this apple to make a pretty good painting with. And I'm going to freehand almost all the red on the inside. And it's going to look pretty harsh at first. Here's something I want you to listen to. Most of when you paint in Photoshop, to the 70% completion stage, you're going to doubt yourself. Only after the 70% completion stage, and I'll announce when I'm after the 70% completion stage, do you start to believe that what you're doing is working? Did you hear me? So when you get to the 30 and 40 and 50% completion stage, do not stop. Okay, just keep trying and keep trying and realize that at the end, because of Photoshop's magic of layers, and the magic of layer masks, and the magic of the opacity up here, you can hide, show, start, do anything else over again. It doesn't really matter. So what I want to do is now generate a bunch of layers. So I'm going to put in a bunch of layers. The first layer is going to be Apple 1. I'd name things really simple, okay? Apple 1, of course, is the main color of the apple. Now, because I'm going to start to cover up this apple reference, I want to get rid of this white background. So do you see the white background around the apple? I have three different selections. If I add them together and then click the layer mask, it will get rid of all the white in the background. You follow what I'm saying? Except there's going to look like there's some white on the edge of the apple. I don't care. Uh, whatever color I choose for a background, I'll use that area you'll see what I mean later, to reflect the color into the apple. If n in other words, if the apple is on a blue background, then obviously a little blue is going to reflect on the apple. If it's on an orange or a yellow or a green background, the same thing is going to occur. Okay? So, one more time, I don't remember if I did, Command S to save the file. So I Command click the apple. Now I'm going to turn off the apple. I'm going to turn on the white background. So you can see it. 
I'm going to hold Command and Shift, and I'm going to add the leaf to my selection. That's Command and Shift or Control and Shift. Then I'm going to go Control and Shift and add the stem. Now, do you see how I have a combination of the stem, the leaf, and the apple? Because I held Command Option or Control. I'm sorry, Command Shift or Control Shift. Now, with me selected on the apple layer, I'm going to click the layer mask. Now, look what it did. It cut that out of the apple. Now, I'm going to right-hand click and disable it so you can see what it cut out. I'm going to right-hand click and enable it. Now, I'm going to hit Command S to save. Now, I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to put it way up on top, and I'm going to skinny, m I'm sorry, make it really small. Now, I'm turning on the white background because I hate painting against a checkerboard background. I'm going to click on the upper apple and hit Command T, and then I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to make this apple teensy-weensy. So I always have a copy of my apple up in the corner for me to view. So I can kind of gain, I'm going to make it a little bigger, so I can get my visual impression of how that apple looks. I'm going to hit the Return key, and I'm going to call this, this is for Brian, this is my clicky layer. C-L-I-C-K-Y. Why? Because I can clicky it on and off and I can see how I'm painting. Okay? It's, I'll throw it away when I'm all done. Do you follow what I'm saying? Okay. Now, what I want to do is start with Apple One and eventually I'll make a folder with everything. Now, I'm going to take the B key and I'm going to grab what I consider to be the overall color of this apple. So let me zoom in and I'm going to pick the medium, M-E-D-I-U-M, medium value of what I see in this apple, which is about right there. Now, if I make a selection of the apple by command or control clicking on it, turn off the apple, click, and hit option delete, I'll fill up my apple with the medium value. Now, I am going to make at least four layers of color on top. At first, I told you it's not going to look good till it's 75% completed. I want to freehand color. Now, I'm going to do this, and I want you to understand, make another copy of the apple. I'm going to put it way up on top, and I'm going to turn it off and on, and I'm going to use it as my guide. In fact, I'm going to right-hand click and apply the layer mask. I'm going to throw this away too. And this is for me to paint with. So this is going to be my paint guide. I'm going to throw it away later. It's the coolest thing in the world, okay? So I'm going to make sure though I'm selected on the right layer. Now what I'm going to do is double click this and go Command C. Then I'm going to go Command V and I'm going to say that this is going to be, I'm thinking here, um, color 2, and then I'll double click that and hit Command C, and then I'm going to go here and hit Command V, delete 3, so it's color 3. I'll go Command C, I'm sorry, Command V, I did the wrong, Command C back on this one, Command V back on this one, and I'll go number 4. Um, here's something that I want you to hear. Every color change that you make choose a new layer. Now repeat that. Every color change you make, you, you want to use, make a new layer. Because what if you combine three colors together in one layer, and suddenly you wish the second color wasn't there? How do you get rid of the second color when you've painted two other colors with it? Follow what I'm saying? So be very conscious I can never say that word. Be very um, attentive to the colors that you're using. Now let's go to the next color. I'm going to turn, this is going to be a technique I want you to look at. I'm turning on this paint guide, but I'm not clicking to it. I'm on the second one. Now watch how I'm going to click this color right here. Now, without you even looking at where I'm painting, I'm going to move down a little bit. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to deselect and I'm going to make the paintbrush bigger. Now I'm going to paint at about 10% flow. I'm going to grab this color right here. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just starting to paint. I'm actually painting exactly where I want to paint. And I'm going to go up and over this whole thing. I don't care if I get color out here. Look at, don't care, don't care, I don't care. 
okay so I want you to just use about a 10% flow and I want you just to paint your little heart out and remember that underneath underneath these dark colors you don't stop this red from being there underneath the dark colors is the red so I'm painting and it's gonna look very messy and I don't care did you hear that I don't care so let me paint all the way up here now this is what it looks like so far okay good that's perfect now let's go to let's keep on painting let's turn off on this and turn on that and let's paint okay now okay now I'm gonna go to color number two each time I'm gonna try to get a little darker and then each time my brush is gonna get a little smaller now I'm starting to paint with this dark so now I'm gonna start to paint on the whole apple I'm just going to start to blend in all of my values. But you're saying to me, Brian, you can't even see where your color is going. And I'm saying to you, mm-hmm, so what's the point? Paint where your Bible, paint where your reference tells you the color is. There will be times that I'm not going to have this on. Now, do you see how I'm starting to get all of that to blend in? Now, let's make the brush bigger. Remember, I'm only painting at 10% on the flow, and I'm all the way soft on my brush. So let's keep on painting. Just have at it. Have some fun with this. You will have a lot of fun as you progress on this painting. So here's the second color. Look at how the second color is starting to work really beautiful. Now, I'll start to blend that out right here, and I'll start to bring it up and I'll start to make that look real nice. Now, already I'm gonna do this for you. I'm gonna option click between this layer to clip that layer to the overall color on Apple One, and I'm gonna hold the option or Alt key and I'm gonna click it here. Now let's go to the next color. Notice, new color, new layer. Now let's go to the dark value. Let's click the dark value. Now let's be a little bit more careful where the dark value goes. And let's click and go like this. Let's start to now just paint right across where the dark value is. Let's paint right here. You're saying, but Brian, you can't see where the color is going. How do you do this? Answer, you've heard of practice, right? Practice makes absolute perfect. Now, when I turn this off, do you see how I'm starting to get that feel of that roundness on that apple? Now, look up to your upper right. Do you see how I can paint with getting this darker? Now, if it's bothering you that the color is going everywhere, all you have to do is hold your option or alt key and click and clip that layer to the other layer. Now we're going to have a blend in, um, beautiful blend in layer in a few minutes. Now all the fine tuned smaller things you do are going to be on higher layers. Now repeat that to me. The smaller things you do are going to be on the higher layers. I have to pause for a second and I'll come right back to painting. Hi you guys, I want you to see how I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer right now. I had no selection active. Make sure all your layer masks go on and they become white at first. Now, do you see this upper area of the dark? When I turn on the reference layer, do you see how there's a, a sharp line between the both darks? Watch how I can dial my brush down, okay? paint black on the layer mask, and it will reduce that value between the two of those um, let me turn off the reference layer. I can actually now cut out that dark right through here. So I use a mixture while I'm painting of layer masks, painting on the layer mask or painting on the image layer. And look at how cool that is. I mean, it's just so powerful. All right. And look at how the apple doesn't look really great right now, but it's only to the 30% completion stage. But I have total saturation of paint as I'm turning this off and on. And I'm just going to keep the layers flying. Now I'm going to go to color 5. And I'm going to automatically clip. How do I do it? Option or Alt click between the layers. Turn on your reference layer. And let's get back to this um, opaque red value. So I, hold the B, I hit the B key. I hold the Option or Alt key. I grab this color. Now I'm only painting at 10%. And I'm going to fine tune these colors on top. Okay, I'm just going to fine tune them. So um, I just want to get a little bit of this like pinky reflection going on here. And I want to dial it down into the apple. Now let me turn off the reference layer. Look at how that color just blends beautifully. Now if it's too much, what do you do? 
Yeah, you add a layer mask and you reduce it or you just kill the opacity on the layer, okay? Not a big deal. It really isn't a big deal. And I'm starting to get that nice color. Now I would like to bring that beautiful red back, so I'm going to add another layer. And that is going to be Alt or Option clicked and I'm going to put in there red back just as it sounds. Now let's go get the red back and let's just paint slowly on here, not try to go real fast, and let's just dial or paint the red at 10% on the flow and just lay it in there. Now let's turn this off. Look at how that red just blends beautifully right in and I can just put it everywhere I want to. Look at how I'm bringing that red back right in, whoops, a little bit too far there. And I can look at my little apple up on the upper right hand corner and use it as my guide. I'm trying to make this a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm just about there. I'm just, I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to put the flow down at like 7%. So I'm putting less red up here and look at how I can make that look real pretty. Now, I think I'm just about there on the apple feel of the whole thing. Okay, I need to now get in some of the detail. So I'm going to now make a new layer and I'm going to call it detail one and I'm going to say it's the top detail now let's start bringing off I'm going to um I know I didn't finish that sentence but let's alt click between or option click between the layer so it clips it to that overall pink layer on the bottom one two three four five six six additional layers now I have to use my technique of painting above and below um, this line right there. So do you see that line that I'm clicking? Now let's go turn on the reference layer and I'll show you what I need to do. I need to bring a little bit of white back, but I'm not going to bring back white. I'm going to use a bluish toned background. So maybe what I should do is put in a blue background before I go any farther so you can see what color I'm actually reflecting into the apple. Okay, so I'm going to select away from that um, below the apple, way on the bottom, I'm going to click a new layer and call it background. Now, the same thing applies. This is going to be background, and I'm going to double click it and hit Command C, and then I'll make two layers above it. This one's going to be background number two. Now, why would you think that I'm actually making three background layers? Answer is, help me, help me. It's because I am actually going to use three colors on the background. Don't paint everything on the same layer. Now I'm making a fourth layer and that one is going to be the shadow. Everything on its own layer, so if you screw up, you can just turn off the layer. Opacity down the layer, start over on the layer. But let's go down to the original background. And now let's just pick a good blue, okay? A good contrast blue will be very nice. Let's make it a nice sky blue. Oh, that's very, very pretty. Now, let's um, just hold Option Delete and fill up the background. Now, do you see the white that's on the reflected apple? That is the reference layer. Let me turn off the reference layer so you can see what it looks like. Boom, off. Now, I'm going to make this a studio lit background, okay? So I'm going to click to layer two. In layer two, I'm going to dial the, the size of the canvas way down hit the bracket key to make my brush huge and I'm going to pick a really good dark and deep blue for the background. Now I'm just going to, uh, I'll turn off the reference image on the right hand side. Good. Now I'm just going to darken behind the apple. I'm just going to paint. Look at how much easier it is with me being so high, I'm seeing, I'm sorry, so magnified away from that canvas. Look at how easy it is for me to cover the board. Now let's just this is called vignetting a studio feel. Just let's take a little bit of darkness from the bottom, a little bit of darkness like this. I'm going to dial down the brush. Now I'm holding the shift key. I'm going to click the shift key. I'm sorry, click the brush, hold the shift key, and I'm going to work my way across. Now I can't do anything else but paint horizontally. Now I've got a beautiful studio lit background, and I'm drawing the attention into the apple. So I'm taking a little bit of darkness from the side. Now, let's lighten up a little bit right in this area. Uh, I actually, I'm going to get a little blacker with the background. So let's click up here and go to the richest black blue I can. And then let's just throw that black blue up on top. Remember, this is my third color and I have three layers. 
I'm going to bring that um, second color on background two. I'm going to go back to that same blue, which was about right here. And I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit farther on the second layer. Okay, that looks really nice. Okay, now let me um, add another layer above background three, and let me call this foreground. And now let's go to that blue. Uh, I'm going to um, cancel that. And I'm going to hit the B key, hold the Option key, and grab that original blue. How do I get it? I'll turn off these three layers. Let me just grab that original blue, turn on these layers again, make sure I'm painting on the foreground layer. And look, I just want to brighten up a little bit of the area around the apple, just so that it looks like the spotlight is on the apple. Now, I'm going to go to the shadow layer. I'm going to use my reference to actually freehand the shadow on there. Now, how do I do that? Well, the shadow appeared way down here um, on the original apple, okay, on the original apple layer. So what I have to do so I can see the shadow is duplicate that a fourth time, did I say, or a third time? And I'm going to move it all the way up to the top. Now, in a few seconds, I'm going to delete this. So I turn it on. Now I'm going to disable the mask. Now there's the shadow. Now, I want you to see how subtle it is. Now I'm going to grab a dark blue and I'm just going to paint a slight shadow underneath it. So, um, you can see it right there. Now, let me make sure I'm grabbing the darkest blue that I have again. So, let me turn this off, back away, grab this dark blue, zoom in, Turn this on, but make sure you're painting on the shadow layer. I'll say it again. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've painted stuff on the reference layer and I have to Command Z or Control Z it back? So let me click and hold the Shift key, and now you know that if I go too far with the shadow, what can fix the shadow? In fact, is it even smarter to go too far than not far enough? And the answer is yes, because you can minimize it with a finish my sentence. Hopefully you said layer mask. And now let's go in and turn off this and look at how I have way too dark of a shadow, right? Right? I don't think so. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to even make a couple more mistakes on it so you see the power of this application. Okay. Now, let me deselect if I had anything selected. Let me add a layer mask to the shadow. And now let's lighten up on the shadow. Let's just make it beautiful. And I'm only painting at, like, what was my flow? At 7%. Now, I didn't even want that out here to the left. Now, let me make my brush nice and small and thin this down. Oh, gosh, isn't that pretty? Now, let's make the brush slightly bigger, lighten up just a little bit here, lighten up a little bit there. Look at how sensitive that shadow is. Now, look at how nice that shadow lays on the surface. I'll take the shadow away. I'll put the shadow back. Layer masks are fantastic. Now if I wanted a deeper shadow, I click to the image, I'm still painting in the same value, and I can add more of a shadow in behind it just to get a little bit more bulkiness to the apple. And then I'll come back with a layer mask and I'll minimize that. Okay, So I'll click on the layer mask now and I'll minimize this by painting black on it. There, that's absolutely beautiful. And I like my deep, deep apple, Command S to save the file. Now what I should do is make a folder. And I'm going to name it background. Good. Now let's shift click all of them, meaning everything that had to do with the background, and drop it into the background folder. Now I can close that, and you can see how it economizes my layer palette. Now, I think I'm touching my mic. I didn't mean to. It probably sounded horrible on the screen. I just wanted to make sure my mic was on. <laughs> I know that sounded silly. But let me turn off my reference layer, and now I'm going to use a little influence on the apple. Let me turn on my little tiny clicky copy up here, and now let's go back to what I wanted to do in the first place. Now I'm going to click to the detail top number one layer. There's nothing on it. Let's now get close and turn on the reference. There it is. Now, I'm going to make a selection of that top. Now, all I want to do is paint a little darker value right here, and then um, it's going to require like three layers. So I'm going to double-click this and go layer, layer. And I'm going to 
clip and clip. Then I'm going to double click the name and hit Command V and I'm going to say that this is going to be number two. I know this looks painful, but there's number two and let me double click and hit Command V and put a number three there. Okay, now that should be enough. I don't know if it is going to be, but um, I want to start getting the light value. So I'm going to inverse the selection. Okay, boom, I just inversed it. Now, what I should have done is to save those colors. Okay, but I have them right here. So I'll go um, grab the blue with the B key, just like this. And then I'm going to go into the foreground color and make it towards the white side of the blue. Okay, now let's get close. Remember, I'm painting on the outside and I'm going to just paint a little bit as it goes right across this right here. Now, let's see how much I'm impacting that. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more white going on. Now, if I don't want to see the selection, I can hit Command H to hide the selection. Now, let me move down. I'll come back with a little bit of white. Now, what I want to do is I want to add, you see how this goes down the apple to the one side? I'm going to actually come down this side right over here. Okay, and I'm going to come down this side right over here. And remember to stick with it. Don't, don't stop what you're doing. And then I'm going to reflect this color all the way to the bottom. And we're just going to minimize it with a layer mask. Now let's turn off the reference and let's see what we've got. Now let me just come real close to the edge. And now let's hit the edge kind of hard here. Okay, that looks really good. I'm going really slow with it. I'm only putting on 8% at a time or 7%. Let's come over here. Now, if I've gone too far, that's what layer masks are for. So I want you to control your paint as I'm controlling my paint. Now, let's come down this side, over on this side. Let's turn on our reference layer. You can see how much it goes on that side. Wow. So let's just click and move it up. Keep it going, Mr. Sorio. Let go of your brush every time you get to the end of your stroke so that you don't have to command Z back five strokes. You only have to command Z back one stroke. There, that's real pretty. Let's go down this side, come up a little bit more. Let's get brighter on the edge. Now, do you see how that apple actually has that blue glow that's on the outside? Now, what I want is I want to take that around the outer side of the apple. So that's going to be on detail top number two. So I'm going to deselect. Now I'm going to freehand this. So I'm on a new layer, right? Right? I'm on a new layer. So I'm going to paint the same color, but on a new layer, because I like what I had on the opposite layer, on the bottom layer. And now I'm going to paint on this layer. Remember, the more layers, the safer you are to make mistakes. Isn't that a beautiful aspect of Photoshop? New layer, new color. New color, new layer. I could say it 900 times in class, and you know that it still works out. Look at how I've done this now. Look at how beautiful I've blended this together on the top. Let's come across the top with a little bit of this. And now, do you see how I only need to, on the number three layer, do you see how I only need to add a little bit of darkness from here up? And look at how gorgeous that looks. I mean, that looks really pretty against that background, doesn't it? And a little bit of white right here will make that really work. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll make a number four layer. So let me command C that. The number four layer will have command V and number four. Oh, I have to click a four. I'm glad you're seeing everything that I'm doing, even though it's taking long. Nothing happens fast. And I'm actually going to put the word white at the end of that. And I'm going to hit command S to save. But let's go to number three. Now I'm turning on my reference, but I'm still selected on number three. Now, let's make it look real pretty with this. Now, I may break my own rule and paint more than one color on a layer. How come? Because it's really small. And if I mess up, it won't take very long to fix it. So I'm going to command click that right there. Now, I want to turn off the reference layer so you can see what I need to do. I need to darken. So I'm going to go grab this dark red and I'm going to start to darken as it moves its way across. And you see how I'm just painting dark, just like this. Let me paint dark like that. Come around like this. Let's get even a smaller brush. Remember, nothing looks good until it's 75 to 80% completed. 
Okay, I'm just painting. Now look what I've got so far. Now let me join it all together. Make the brush bigger. I'm going to hit Command H to hide the selection. Now I don't like how harsh this line is here. So you know what I'm going to do? Do you, do you actually know what I'm going to do? Can you predict what I'm going to do there? Now look at how I've made that look like an inset part of the apple right there. Look how pretty that is. I'll even take this up and over just a little bit. Okay, now I want to Gaussian blur the layer I'm going to turn on and off. Okay, that layer. So I'm going to deselect everything, click this layer right there. I'm going to zoom in, and I want this to Gaussian blur by two pixels or so. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's go, not that much. Let's go to two, like one pixel, maybe one point. There, that's beautiful. That's 1.9 pixels. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, let's do a little detail work on the bottom. Um, you see on the bottom here? that I need to do, um, oh, I didn't do the white. I told you I was going to do the white. So let me put this back, and let's paint a little bit of white on that edge right here with a really teensy-weensy brush. The smaller the detail, the higher the layer, right? So Command-click on the selection. I'm going to do something. I want to zoom in. Do you see the selection right there? In the B key, I can use my cursor key, and I can toggle one Two. I now moved the selection down, but I don't want to paint on the inside of the selection. I want to paint on the outside, so I inverse it. Let me make sure I didn't inverse it already. Command-Shift-I. There. I'm now inversed on the selection. Now what I want to do is turn off the reference layer and show you that if I grab a white in my paintbrush, I'm actually going to watch this, and I'm going to hold Command-H, I mean hit Command-H, I just want to come in with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white right on that edge just to bring this off, just like this. Okay, that's really pretty. Now, I haven't even put on any texture yet, and that apple doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't look too bad at all. Um, I think I got a little bit too much dark going on over here, but let's see after I get the texture in there if I've like cleaned up the apple. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call it bottom detail. Now on the bottom detail, I'm going to clip it again, option or alt click between it, and then I'm going to make a selection of the apple so I don't paint, well I don't have to, I forgot that. Now I'm going to turn on the reference layer. Do you remember that, that little path I made right there, that little path, I'm going to make a selection of it. Now, do you see how I can paint a little dark right here, and it doesn't matter if the dark goes outside, because I've already clipped the bottom detail layer to the reference? Let me grab this dark red. Let me turn off this apple, and let me make sure I'm on the bottom detail. Now let me hit Command-H. See how I can actually paint just a little bit on here? And look at how beautiful I've actually made that little bit of bottom detail. Here is the, the, the item that I painted. Now what I would like to do is I'd like to make a bottom detail number two layer. So let me double click Command C, double click Command V number two. Let me Alt or Option click between them. What's this one going to be? I'm going to use the same blue. So I'm going to grab this blue from over here. I'm in the brush. I hold the Option or Alt key and I sample the blue. I'm going to make it be a lighter blue like this. Now I'm going to make a selection just the same way I did that one right there, but I'm going to inverse it. Command, Shift, I. Now I'm going to hide it. Boom. Now that means I just hit Command H. Now what I want to do is just to gently paint a little bit of that light value right there. Now I want to just make it come up the top here. And, and if I paint too harshly, what do I have to do? In fact, I'll put it on there too harshly on purpose. And then I'm going to hit Command H. I'm sorry. Well, I'll hit Command H so you can see the selection. Now I'm going to Command D the selection. Now I don't even have to worry about paint getting out here because I've already clipped this layer to the one way down here, which is the Apple 1 layer right? Okay, so let's look at the reference. Look at how that light value comes all the way down the side and then it goes just like that. Now let me turn it off. Look at how now I can make this go smaller and look at how I can now melt this together and look at how just 
beautiful that looks. Now, look at how I can just angle the brush up and look at how nice that looks. Now, I think it's too bright though, okay? It's just a little bit too bright and I should have had a little bit right here of the light value. So let's put a little bit of that light value, smaller brush, a little bit of that light value right here. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out. Okay, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, let me come on this side with a little bit more of the light value right here. Just a little bit more, okay, right there. Now, that's gorgeous, but I think this is too bright here. So let's take bottom detail two and just dial it down. There, see how nice that is? Just, just subtly, just a really subtle thing. Now, let's start our texture. Now, the texture should go on top of everything, but we're gonna use a layer mask to kill it. So let me deselect everything, save the file, and I'm going to put in a texture layer. Now the first texture layer is going to be a mouse texture. Then the second texture layer, I spelled texture wrong. Oh my goodness, T-E-X-T-U-R-E. -E. The second texture layer is going to be an electronic pen. So let me um, put in here the Wacom texture. Then we put our dots on, then I do the stem. I'm probably going to do the leaf in the next movie. You don't have to do a leaf, but I am going to do a leaf. If I have time, I'll do it. I don't know how big this movie file is going to get, but whatever. I'm going to automatically clip these, even though there's nothing on them, and I'm going to click to the mouse texture. Now, I need a small brush. Really dial it down, Brian. So let's go return key. Whoops. Let's go return key and make it really small. Now I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to put this on 50%. So now I have a 50% and I'm going in for a dark red. Okay, really dark red. Look, boom, dark red. In fact, I want it to be a real pretty dark red. So let me Z back. Let me make a deep dark red over here. Okay, now I am going to hit the R button and I'm going to rotate the canvas this way. Remember the R button? Now I'm going to hit um, the B key so I can paint. Now I'm going to paint. And it's not going to look great, but it's going to look okay. Now this is with a mouse. I don't care how bad this looks. Remember, you need to go to do this. I'm going to vary the size of the brush. You need, to, you need to take and have confidence in what you're painting. Now I, I realize it. See how hard it is to get a nice curve? with a mouse, but watch out, this is just going to melt in as texture. It's going to be neat, neat texture, I hope. If it looks terrible, we'll do something different. But the fact that I have it on its own layer is amazing. Now let me take the R button and flip it around the other way. And now let's hit the B button and let's make the brush a little bigger and let's now take this and put the texture going in the right way. So no matter how bad this looks, stick with it. If I don't like it, what am I going to do? Yes, you are 100% right. I am just going to throw away the layer and start over. Then I'll find another way to do it. Now I'm certainly not getting very good geometry going on on this apple. Now am I? Now I might have to make a new texture layer for the texture above the apple. Maybe not though. We'll see. Okay, now there is my horrible texture. Let's click the R button and let's reset the view. Okay, looks terrible, right? I don't care. Let's take this and add a layer mask to it just in case. And let's dial down the texture a whole bunch. So it just becomes texture about that much right there. So I have just a little bit of this linear texture going on. Now, see how neat that looks? You can hardly even understand or even see what it has. And once I put the, the, um, the real pretty um, highlight in there, and once I put the light values for the um, uh, dots on the apple, and once I put the stem in, it's going to clean everything up. So what I need to do is save the file again. Um, I'm going to click to the Wacom texture now, and I'm going to unplug my mouse. I need to find my little 
thingy here for the Wacom tablet because I had to unplug one to plug in the other. Okay, now let me grab my pen and let's hit the R button. Now let's flip this to about here. Um, I'm going to start on this side first. And I'm on the right layer, so let's click to the B key. And now I need to make sure that the brush, let's see, see how um, I already have it. See how I already have, because I've set the brush before. Um, I'm going to hit Command Z and then hit Option Command Z back until all that's gone. Okay, now I'm on the right layer. Now let's make the brush a little bit bigger. And let's come over to here. And now let's start to paint a little bit better texture. Now I'm able to get more curves going on. See that? A little bit deeper and all I'm doing is pressing more or less on the brush. So this is the Wacom texture and I already have the mouse texture in there. So let me come in here. Let's get it going. It's just about time to turn. Let's get a little bit more texture going like this. Let's have the texture going like this. Okay, I'm just I'm not talking a whole bunch here. That's okay. Now let's hit the R button. Let's flip it around this way. Whoops. Let's flip it around this way. Now let's hit the B key and let's put the texture in going this way. So one was with a mouse, one was with the Wacom tablet. I have more control graphically. Whoops. I have more control graphically with the Wacom tablet. Obviously. Can you do it with a mouse? Answer yes you can. Now let me just take this and get this a little bit more curved. And since I'm going to kill the opacity on it, whoops, I don't like that last one. Let's have this go down, okay, there. Now what I can do is just start this too. And then I can use my layer mask to minimize those. Okay, now let's hit the R button. Let's come up here and reset the view. Let's put a layer mask on this one right here. Now in the layer mask, let's zoom in. Let's hold the space bar down and move it down. Now, let me put this up at, let me hit the B key for brush. And now let's kill some of these. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to minimize them um, at 50% um, of my flow. Okay, so I'm going to minimize them and I'm going to paint black on the layer mask and now I'm going to get rid of these where they go over that edge. Okay, that's good. And this is good. I don't like these as they're going over this edge. So let's get rid of these. Okay. Let me hold the space bar down and move over this way. Let's um, minimize this. Okay, I'm just painting black on the layer mask. Let's back out of this now. Space bar and move it up and over. Um, let's now take the opacity of that layer way down to what I had before, which was about this much. Now, I think what I want to do is, now watch what I'm going to do, is I'm going to unlink these two and I want to turn my um, my texture so I'm going to unlink them click command make sure my image layer is selected and hit command T and I'm going to turn the texture to flow more with my apple see how I did that and I'll move it over just ever so slightly now I'll hit the return key and I'll redo the link between them and then I'll hit command S to save then I'll even take more of the opacity away and there is my texture. So one was with the mouse. Here is with the Wacom tablet. Let me, f oh, let me find out where I was. Okay, now let me go over here. And let's, here's the Wacom tablet. Here's the mouse. Again, mouse, Wacom tablet. Okay, there's Wacom. There's mouse. I'll leave the Wacom tablet on. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and we are going to do the shine spots. So I need to hit a new layer. Let's call this shine one. And let's clip it again, even though I probably don't have to clip it. And let's make a new layer called shine two. And then I'll make a stem. Now 
forgot what I was going to do. And now let's clip it. Now let's make a new layer and call it stem. And I might have to make more than one stem layer because I probably will. In fact, I'll go stem 1 and stem 2. And you're probably saying, boy, that's a lot of layers. And I'm saying, well, does it even matter that it's a lot of layers? And the answer is no. So now let's go down to the shine one spot. Let's turn on the reference and let's get close. Now let's just take our brush, grab our color, and let's just paint the shine spot. Let me make the brush big and just click, 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 click. Whoops, I'm at 50%. Whoa, that's way too much. I should have been down at 10%. That's way too much. Look at how much I put on the board. Actually, that's not so bad. But um, I don't want to have it be that incredibly... Um, I don't want that much paint coming out of my brush at one time. I never finish my sentences. Okay, now let me put the shine spot here. Let's make the shine spot a little bigger. Let's just click it. Now look what I've done so far. Here is my shine spot. Let's go down. Let's make the brush come down like this. Okay, and now let's click it. Now, I can do one thing or two things to the shine spot. I'm going to turn this off. I can put it on a dissolve layer. Look at how it's on normal. I can dissolve it and I can turn it into this as the bottom layer and then look we'll watch what I can do because you think that's whoa that's too much I don't think so watch how I can actually take and um, gosh and blur that I'm gonna duplicate the layer because I don't want to mess it up okay I'm gonna take and you you heard what I said right so I'm taking the number uh, the copy and I'm going to filter blur gosh and blur and let's gosh and blur that by just a little bit now, um, what I need to do is I need to actually rasterize that. Let me see if I can. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I like what I've got, but I want to blur that. So, hmm. Let me figure out how I want to do that. Um, on a dissolve layer, it's really stuck with dissolve. So, um, I'm going to do a different thing. Let me go to noise and add noise to that. Because if I add noise, oh, that was perfect. If I add noise to that, I can actually now Gaussian blur this. So I'm going to say, OK. So I went to filter, and I went, let me go to Gaussian. Oh, that's even better. Now I'm going to go to a true Gaussian blur. And let's now put it at um, like one pixel Gaussian blurred, like that much right there. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the shine spot underneath, put it back on a normal layer, and then put it on top of that. And then I'm going to turn down, um, I'm going to add a layer mask to it, not to turn down the opacity. And I'm going to get rid of most of it. I only want it in the middle. So I'm going to turn off the bottom one. Okay, there's the one I have. Now I'm going to make the brush bigger, and I'm going to get rid of most of it. Whoops, got rid of too much. I only. I only want the shine spot to appear solid right in the middle of it. So I want it to marry with this shine spot right there. Okay, and I'll even turn down the opacity on that shine spot. Then I'll turn down the opacity on that shine spot. Now let's back off on the file. And let's see how that looks in relationship to this. Okay, now I have to remove the little dotty things from the bottom. So both of them need a layer mask. So let's get rid of this stuff on the bottom. Let me make the brush smaller and chop it off a little bit. Let's get rid of this shine spot on the bottom and make it a little bit bigger on the brush there. I like that. That's pretty. Okay, now there it is right there. Now let's kill some opacity on it again. This one's at 85. Let me kill that a little bit more. And then let's kill this one down to right about there. Now, let's add the white dots on the whole file. So there is my shine spot. I might make a third shine spot. Let me turn up the opacity on the top one. Okay, that looks actually better. Okay, now let's have dots. So shine two are going to be the dots. So let's go grab the brush in the brush palette. 
Um, I didn't even need the brush palette. You know that, right? If I paint it in white and I go right hand click, I can go down and there's Brian's scatter brush, right? Because you and I made a scatter brush. If you have to refer to that movie, go ahead. Now, let's back off and test out our, our, our spatter. So let's go ahead. Um, oh, you know why it's doing that, folks? That's what I want, but I'm going to paint it at 100%. I was at 10% on the flow, okay? That wasn't good. So let me um, put more dots on the bottom and less dots on the top. So let's come in here. Then I'm going to need to custom fit my dots, custom paint some out, and then we're just going to take more on the bottom. Now you know that if I automatically alt or option click between them, I cut the dots off where I should. That's probably enough dots on there. Let's just put a little bit more in here, a little bit more here. Let's make them more dense on the bottom through the center. Okay, and then just a little bit back here. Boom, okay, and a little bit coming in from the left, okay. Now a little bit more here. Let's put a little bit more dots around this. Now those dots should go underneath the shines, okay? And I'm going to automatically take their opacity down to probably, let me see, let me see, let me see, probably 10 to 12 percent. Okay, now that's not looking too bad. Now what I should do is put a little dot in the middle of those dots, okay? But I'm going to deselect, if I had a selection active, add a layer mask to that. And now I'm going to put this at 100%. And I'm going to now paint black on the layer mask where I want to get rid of some of these dots. So you see up here how there's not a lot of dots. All you have to do, make sure you're clicked on the layer mask, deselect, Brian. Okay, and now that should just take those dots away. I have to pause this. Thank you. And I'll be right back to you. Okay, thank you. That was just a phone call. Um, I have shine number two and I'm turning it off and on. I need another shine spot above it. Um, nothing is ever perfect, you know, and I'm going to name it shine or dots. I'll put it dots two, which I should name this dots one. Now, I want to make a selection of dots one, okay? And you can see how I've done that, right? Now I want a smaller circle on the inside. Now, how do you do that? I am going to take something called select. First of all, I'm going to turn on the guide and I'm going to back off. Do you see how these dots have a ring and then a smaller bit of color on the inside and the color is kind of yellow? Well, I can do that. I can do that through a series of different things, okay? So I'm going to maybe even make a yellow dotted layer and the yellow is going to be there. But how do I make a smaller dot? I simply go to select, modify, contract. I'm going to put in one pixel. Now, if some of the dots disappear, I don't care. So now I've made them go smaller, but it wasn't small enough. So I'm going to go select, modify, contract. I'm going to put in two pixels. Now that's nice and small. Now, how do I save that if I want to use it again? I go to select, save selection as smaller dots. Now that appears in the channels palette if I want it, if I need it. Now, um, I'm going to click to dots two, and I'm going to fill it with a very bright value. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the reference layer and I'm just going to go, I'll hit Command H so you can see that I've hid the selection, but then I'm going to go Option Delete. Now I have tinier white dots. See them? Now I'm going to add a layer mask to them. I'm going to deselect the selection, add a layer mask, really kill the opacity on this, and now I have little tiny dots in the center of the big dots, but I don't want all of them. If I turn on the reference layer, you can see how some of them actually should get smaller and a little bit more yellow even. So there's dots number one. Oh, I love dots number two. Dots number two are awesome.
Maybe now dots number one can even get lower in opacity. So I'm going to turn on dots number one and I'm going to take them even lower down to like 5% opacity. Okay, that's looking awesome. Let me take dots number two up a little bit in opacity. Now I'm going to click on dots number one, the bigger dots. And I'm going to, yes, and I'm going to make a new dot layer underneath. And instead of contracting the selection, I'm going to expand the selection. I'm going to fill it with a yellow glow. Okay, so I'm going to go filter. I'm sorry, select, modify, expand. And I'm going to go three pixels. Now I have bigger dots. Now I'm going to grab a yellow, a yellow gold. So let me click down to the yellow and make sure it's a yellow orange. And let me now add that yellow, which is going to be too harsh a yellow. But I'll put it on a Gaussian blur and I'll knock the opacity back. So um, I now just need to fill layer one. I'm going to go yellow dots. Remember, nothing looks good until it's 75% completed. I'm going to hit Command H so you can see it, but then Option Delete. Now I have big fat yellow dots there. I don't really want yellow dots everywhere. Okay, so I take the yellow dots and I turn them down way in opacity. And now I just have a like a yellow glow. Look at how the glow, I'm going to zoom in. Look at how the glow around there is yellow. And if I turn off the yellow dots, they're not yellow. Look at how beautiful that is. Now let's add a layer mask to the yellow dots and then I should really minimize the dots in the dark area of the reference. This is where you have to have patience. Look at how in the dark areas how the dots don't appear so bright. So just use a bigger brush, paint with black, make sure you're painting all the way soft. See how I did that? Make sure your flow certainly isn't on 100. Make sure it's on like 5. Now Let's turn off the reference layer. Let me turn off the yellow dots, dots number two, and that one's fine. But I'm going to click on this dot layer and this dot layer. Okay, so, well, that's the shine spots. I have to move it down. Sorry. So this is the dot layer. So I am going to, with the only dot layer on, get rid of the dots. I'm going to put this up to about 20 that I've decided. That was too small. So now I'm going to get rid of those dots. Okay. Let me deselect. Okay, something is not working here. I am not getting rid of those dots. And what is not working? I am in the B key. I am painting at 20% flow of black on my mask. And that should be getting, oh, they're going away. Let me put this up higher. Something is acting weird, and I have to see what it is. So let me deselect again. This is the dots layer. I'm clicking on this. Um, let me minimize this. OK. See, this is the type of thing that happens with somebody all the time where you can't quite figure out why something isn't going away. Well, you know what? Um, Photoshop just caught up to me because now it's working. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm getting a little worried about Photoshop, so I'm going to go to Edit, watch this, Purge All. I'm going to purge all the video cache and purge everything and refresh Photoshop. A very cool thing to learn, isn't it? Now let's turn on the next dot layer. Now I'm going to click on the yellow dots. Now let's minimize them in this area. Again, Photoshop is acting funny. Um, I might need to restart Photoshop, but I don't know. I'm painting in black. I'm painting on the layer mask, and it's getting rid of them. Yes, it is now. It's just taking a while to catch up to me, so I just better be patient. It could quit on me, and if it quits on me, I better save it right now. So that's a good thing for you to learn. Okay, let me click to the next dot layer. Okay, now this is the one that I really want to kill those bright, bright dots, which it's going to take a while to catch up to me there. Okay, just let me let it catch up without this failing on me. There, that's minimizing them beautifully in there. Let's minimize them up in here. It's going to catch up in a second. Don't know why it's not doing that. Let me turn off this. Oh, that's on the yellow dots. 
yes, I want the yellow dots minimized up in this area. Okay, that's going away. So take the time that you need to take to get rid of the things that you need to minimize. And then when I put the stem in there and you back off on this, it's going to look really nice. It sure is acting funny. I really don't feel like starting Photoshop over again. I'm going to save it again. What I should do, folks, is quit Photoshop and reopen Photoshop, but it's still working. Okay, now, look at my apple. Here's the original. Here's Brian's apple. Looks pretty good. Now let's go to stem number one, okay? Now let me zoom in. Here is the stem. Click. Let me click the reference layer on. Let me apply the layer mask, but make sure I'm selected on what? Yes, the stem layer. Now this time I'm not going to clip it to the apple because it would cut the stem off right where the apple is, right? So let's go grab this, this stem color. Now, I'm going to paint. I'm just going to go Option Delete. Now, if I turn off the reference layer, there's my stem. Now on stem number two, I know I told you that we might need additional layers. I better be good to my word here. So I'm going to click two new layers above. Let's go stem number three and stem number four, and then click to stem number two. Now I'm just going to start painting, but I don't like the angle that I'm painting on. So I'm going to hit the R button and I'm going to rotate this in that direction. Then I'm going to hit the um, space bar and move it in this direction. I'm even going to rotate it a little bit more like this, okay? Because it's easier for me to paint like that. So I'm going to make my brush smaller, hit the B key, make the brush tinier. And let's go grab this value and I'm painting at 50%. I better put that down to 10%. Let's just paint. Remember, it's not going to look good until it's 70% completed. And you're going to get tired of me saying that, but it's the truth, okay? So, let's just keep on painting. And let me come up this side. You know, notice how I'm painting with the reference layer on. And I better grab this color, which I thought I was painting on and I'm on stem number two. You know, it's getting very close to the fact that I am, see, there's no color going on my, there's no color going on there. That is the color that I want to actually go on there. So what is the problem here? Um, I'm gonna save the file. I am going to take time on screen. Um, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna quit Photoshop. Um, Brian realized why the brush was acting weird, and it wasn't Photoshop's problem, it was his. Remember when I painted all the dots, and I told you guys when you want to go back to a regular brush, you have to go back to a regular brush? Well, I didn't. It's my fault. So I'm going to... Uh, see the little icon down here? I did not open my brush palette. So I'm going to click to the regular icon, turn off Shape Dynamics, and Scattering. I feel really silly, but you know what? That's what stops you, me, anybody cold with Photoshop. So luckily I didn't hurt anything, okay? So I'm going to go down like this and I'm going to turn on the reference layer. First I'm going to show you that now it paints beautifully, see? Now I'm going to click on the reference layer and I'm just going to start painting. That was about the silliest thing that I've done today. Not in my life, just today, because I've done a lot of silly things, but you know what? It's okay. How come it's okay, actually? Well, Brian, because you paint one value on one layer, and you really can't destroy anything too bad by taking one layer at a time. So what I want you to look at what I'm doing is I'm just freehanding this inside here to make that look good. Let me hit Command H to hide that. So when I back off on the stem, and really the stem is almost done, it looks really nice already. All I have to do is just get a little bit more darkness on the one side and then put a highlight, some highlights on the stem. And then I'll do that on stem number three. I may not even need stem number four. So let me put this back on. Let's grab the highlight value. Let's turn this off. And then you can see how me just painting a little bit of highlight value. I'm going to put the flow down to five. Boy, now I could really kill some of those dots on there, but I think the dots even themselves look good. So let's take this and just paint a little dark, um, bright value on the top of the stem. 
there. Now let's hit the R button and turn it the right way. Let's see what um let's see where the highlight is. Well the highlight, if I hit the B key, goes down this side. So let's take the same value and just hit it right down that. Now look at how by instantly putting that highlight on that stem, oh my goodness, look at how beautiful that is. It almost makes me cry. So it's really pretty. Okay, I'm going to put a couple more little dingy doos up here on the stem because stems are pieces of wood and they're not perfect things by no means. Now let me turn on the reference layer and there's a little bit of a highlight down this frontal edge. I don't even know if I want that highlight there, but I'm going to put it in. Now let's back off and look at how the stem looks nice. Okay, now let me <laughs> hit the R button and let's reset the view. And there's your apple. Let me turn this off and there's the apple. Now, you can stop this movie right now and I'd be real happy, okay? If this is the way that you did your apple, I'd be fine, okay? Um, I don't like this big dark red spot there. I don't think that it blends out well. So I'm going to show you a little um, trick. I want to um, find where this red layer is. So I'm going to hit the V key. I'm going to right hand click and look at how it goes right to the texture. Well, I'm going to turn off the Wacom texture that I had and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to right hand click and go to Apple color number four. I didn't have to search for that. Isn't that neat? Now I'm going to put a layer above Apple number four and I'm going to call it fix. Now I'm going to grab the really pretty red that's right. Let me hit the B key and grab the really pretty red that's right there. Now. If I make the brush slightly bigger, watch how I can minimize the um, harshness of that red by painting a little bit on here. And look at how I'm now kind of maneuvering that red a little bit better than what it is. Now, if I'm not actually making anything happen on the Fix It layer, um, I should be. I'm going to move the Fix It layer up a little bit. Then I'm going to move it up even higher. Now, let me see why I'm not painting. I'm at 5% on the flow. Let me go up to 10%. There's another con conundrum. Is that what you guys say? Okay, let me make sure that red is working real good. Let me um, not assume anything, and let me put the Fix-It layer way up high. Way up high on the file. Let me deselect. Oh! I ha I had the stem selected. Gosh, am I making a bunch of mistakes. But I love the mistakes I'm making. I'm putting this back down where it's going. Remember in one of the um, lessons that I had for you, I'm finding the apple number four layer. So I can put this back down to the apple number four color, which is right here. Um, remember when I said that you could... Um, Actually, I want it down at 5. Remember when I said that once you hit Command H on a selection and then you get distracted, that you may actually forget that you had the selection active? And if you have a selection active in one area and you try to paint in another area, could you tell me what's going to happen? It's not going to go anywhere, is it? Now look at how pretty that looks. Look at how by painting underneath the dots, look at how by painting one layer above that dark, you have so much control in Photoshop. It's like, oh my gosh, is that pretty. And look at how I minimize that dark. Then I could go back down to the dark right there for the layer mask and just, just minimize it with a little bit of black on there. And look at how I blended that so pretty in there. That is really nicely done. Okay, I'm going to do the leaf layer, and I'm going to show you how that one really beautiful um, channel selection, since I did it for you, um, I don't think I used the stem number four layer, so I'm going to call this leaf one. Then I'm going to need a leaf two layer. So I will double click, and I'm going to get leaf one and go to leaf two. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm selected on leaf one. I'm going to turn on the reference. I'm going to go to the leaf layer and select it. Boom. I got it. Now, let me go to the B key and fill with a majority of that middle green color. 
Okay, there's that beautiful middle green color. I'm turning this off and I'm going to click and I'm going to go Option Delete and fill it up. Now, let me freehand paint on leaf two and then leaf three's layer is going to be the really pretty um, veins. And I'm going to add a layer mask to it because I already know I'm going to need it. So let's go to leaf number two. Let's command click to make the selection active. Let's turn on the paint guide. Let's freehand paint the light value. So let's come into the edge and freehand paint here. Just freehand paint it. Let me make the brush smaller. I'm only painting at 5. I think I'm going to go up to 10%. And let me turn off the selection, turn off this, and let me hit Command H. There's that dreadful Command H on the selection again. Now let me grab a little bit darker green. Okay, that's good. And now I'm going to flood the top of this with darker green. Just flood. I don't really care how bad it's going to look because the veins are going to kind of blend it out and fill it in. So there's this off. Okay, that's looking really good. Look at how I'm just flooding this top section with that dark value. Okay, now I'm going to go. I should not do what I'm about to do, but I'm getting... Um, uh, I can't do it. I have to put a new layer in there. I'm going to put the yellow. It's going to be called leaf four. And I'm going to put the yellowish tone that's right here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to put this yellowish tone with a really small brush right on the stem of the leaf. Just like this. Then I'm going to put a little brown tone. And yes, I'm painting on the same layer. But I want to blend the leaf. Look what I'm doing. I'm going to blend the leaf color into that a little bit too harsh. Okay, oh gosh, is that pretty. And then I'm just going to flood it right up here and flood it right up the side, make my brush slightly bigger, and there is a nice leaf coming right off of there. Now, let me turn on the reference layer, and I should hit the highlights on the edge. So um, I need a new layer. My goodness, five leaf layers. And then before I let this go, I'm going to group all my layers the way I should. So I show you a very good example of organization. And I have actually painted the entire apple, the texture on the apple, the stem, and the leaf, and the texture on the leaf. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job of being productive. I, I'm almost not wanting to talk while I'm painting on this edge. Okay, now let's go see what it looks like when I use the channel selection and I paint on the image. So let's go to channels. Let's make a selection of the leaf veins. There they are. Do you see them? Now, I am going to hide the selection, but I need to go grab the right color, the correct color. So let's zoom in and grab the correct color. And I always make it a pinch brighter because you can always dial it down in opacity, right? Right? Okay, so I'm zooming out. I'm going to turn off this. I'm going to hit Command H. Why? Cause so I can see what I'm painting. And now with a bigger brush, I am going to just put the texture, bigger brush I said, look at how the texture of the leaf is absolutely, <laughs> oh my God, is that gorgeous. That, you, you, you can't, you can't fake that. I mean, that is just really pretty how much power you have by using a channel selection. And I know a lot of you are going to call me back or email me or text me on how incredible color range is because I have a whole nother extra credit assignment if you want to do it on color range. Look at that leaf. Holy moly. What it needs is a water drop, <laughs> but I'm not going to do water drops right now. There is my leaf. There is my stem. There's my apple looks pretty darn good. I should kill a little bit more of those little texture values, but that apple looks so good I want to take a chunk out of it. So good luck on your apple. Email me any problems that you have, um, and I'll see you in the next assignment.